Roses and Champagne Kisses, Heart of the Family, Book Two, written by Stacy Eaton, narrated by Lisa Beacom. When is the wedding? I asked my boss and friend, Robin Landry, as she sat across from me at the cafe counter. Her laptop was open in front of her, fingers poised over the keys as she cocked her head to the side. I could practically see her searching through her memory banks as she pondered the answer to the question. Is it three weeks or four? She shook her head, looking a little flustered as she reached for her mouse and began to maneuver to her calendar. I scanned the quaint cafe as she searched for information. I couldn't believe how much I had come to love this cozy cafe and all that went with it here in Cricklewood Cove in the short time that I'd been here. Robin had purchased the business about a year and a half ago from a retiring couple, and she had built it into something so much more than a mere catering company. From what I had heard, Heart of the Family Catering had been in an old building with no room to grow, and it had focused on local events for parties and weddings. That was small potatoes compared to what Robin had created. The business was now located in a newer building that included the Heart of the Family Cafe and Heart of the Family Bakery just a walk through the stone archway on the other side of the cafe seating area. The cafe included a counter seating area like a diner's, but it was an old wooden bar similar to those normally found in a tavern. We served traditional eggs and bacon, along with soups and sandwiches, for lunch, but we also had some incredible culinary specialties that our chefs created for the catering side. Patrons of the cafe served as guinea pigs, testing new recipes. Our regulars knew that on Tuesdays, they could expect to receive a small sample of some wonderful concoction, and the cafe was packed from the time it opened until it closed. The bakery, which was the newest addition, specialized in cakes, muffins, cupcakes, and elegant creative pastries for every kind of event. Like most bakeries, they also had the traditional breads and other tasty treats, too. I had met Robin at a catered event two months ago, and she'd stolen me from my employer. Well, maybe not stolen. It was more like a rescue. She'd witnessed my slug boss demeaning me in front of a group of event-goers. It didn't matter that I had a tray in front of me full of bubbling glasses or that people were waiting impatiently for more drinks. After my ass of a boss stalked away, Robin approached me and asked if he was like that often. I'd been embarrassed and didn't particularly want to talk to anyone, much less hear a speech about how men shouldn't talk to women or employees that way. I'd sighed and peered at her momentarily. What I'd found in her bright, crystal-clear blue eyes had stopped me in my tracks. I'd seen anger, frustration, and also understanding, which had given me pause. So I answered honestly. He does it all the time. She'd pursed her lips, glanced around us as if gauging to see who was listening, and then asked, how would you like to work for me at Heart of the Family Catering? She smiled as my mouth dropped open. You'd probably want to move closer to Cricklewood Cove because we're over two hours from here, but I can help you find a place to live. I own a catering company, cafe, and bakery there, and we're the biggest caterer in our county and growing quickly. I could use help in any of those three areas. My jaw still hung open, and I'd wondered briefly if I was drooling. <laughs> was she really offering me a job? My eyes scanned her beautiful face and searched above her head for evidence of a halo. She had to be an angel. My luck was never this good. Are you serious? I'd asked. She'd grinned widely. I'd shake your hand, but your hands are full. I'm Robin Landry, the owner of Heart of the Family. I've been watching you work the room, and you're really good. You deserve better than what that douchebag is doing for you. So yes, I'm very serious. Finley Parker. I nodded as I adjusted the heavy tray of glasses, tempted to set them down and walk away right then and there. Instead, I looked deeply into her bright blue eyes expectantly. When can I start? 
Her laugh had been music to my ears, and she'd told me I could start as soon as I wanted.